So let's talk about experiments. Up until now, what we were talking about was observational studies. Observational studies, we can generalize to the wider population if the participants in that study were gathered randomly. And that randomness takes care of a lot of the confounding variables, which is why we can generalize it. With an experiment, the purpose of experiments is to determine a cause and effect. If you take this drug, will it get rid of your headache? If you have chemotherapy, will it stop your cancer? If you stop smoking, will your lungs heal? Or what we're going to see later, if you take this vaccine, will you build up a resistance to COVID-19? That's a cause and effect. And that cause and effect is what comes with experiments. But just like with observational studies, there's a caveat on when we can illustrate that cause and effect. Because again, we have to worry about those confounding variables. And with experiments, the cause and effect only comes if the groups are randomly assigned, okay? And like I said earlier, participants won't necessarily randomly gather, like an observational study. If you're gonna survey people, you can choose to randomly ask people if they wanna participate every fifth person or go to one classroom. Um, but with experiments, we need a longer term commitment from people, which is why we generally have people volunteering for ex experiments. Okay, we can't randomly go to an entire classroom and say, hey, do you guys want to participate in an experiment? You might, but it's a lot more complicated because we've got to have that follow up. Of if I give you this, if I do this to you, is this other thing going to happen? In order to show that cause and effect again, we need an experiment with random assignment. So on page four, I've got a whole bunch of definitions of the different types of variables explanatory variable. Uh, the first variable is called the explanatory variable. You may also know it as the independent variable. Um, so in our, what we're going to talk about today, the explanatory variable is going to be the, the dose of the vaccine people were given. P.S. I just gave away one of the answers to the questions I'm going to ask you. Uh, and then the dependent variable, also known as the response variable, is the outcome. Right, so the example I give here is drinking beer. Will drinking alcohol get you drunk? The explanatory variable is what a person drinks. We might have someone drink beer, someone drink wine, someone drink vodka, and someone drink soda, and someone drink water. And so the explanatory variable would be what I had them drink. The response variable is that outcome or whether or not they get drunk. Uh, it's called a response variable because that's, the res that's how they're reacting to what I had them do. I had them drink something and then I saw how drunk they were. Okay, so how drunk they were is explained by what they drank. Okay, do you see why we use those terms? And their response to what they drank is how drunk they were. If for our purposes, we'll mainly be using explanatory and response variables. More proper researchers tend to use independent, dependent variables. Okay, and then we have the treatment, which is what a person drinks, what I have them drink specifically, the beer, the soda, the water, spirits, water, what have you. Then we have some confounding lurking variables like a person's weight. In this, in this experiment we're talking about, it could be a person's weight, a person's tolerance. Again, like I had said, we want to talk about random assignments because that's what makes this able to say a cause and effect. Uh, I'm just going to skip down looking at the time. We always have a control group, okay, and this person might be given a placebo. The control group is the, is the person who's not given any real value. So for instance, uh, the control group in my drinking experiment would be the people that drank the water. Whereas if I gave them a placebo, that difference with that is the participant thinks they're being given a real drug. So in this one, I could replace a label and actually give them a non-alcoholic beer, but have a label with a regular beer. So that's an example of a placebo treatment. And I don't know why, not necessarily real, that's a judgment. We think they're drinking an actual beer. And so it is possible that we see a placebo effect, and that placebo effect would be getting drunk off of that non-alcoholic beer. This is a simplistic example. If you're 
aware even non-alcoholic beer has a small bit of alcohol in it just like decaf coffee has a small bit of caffeine in it you know if i put like some fizzy apple juice in it or something that really has no alcohol in it and them getting actually drunk from it would be a placebo effect so let's talk about blinding real quick blinding is when a person doesn't know if they're getting a real treatment or not or when the researcher doesn't know if they're getting the real treatment or not okay if it's a single blind study the person receiving the drug doesn't know if they're getting the real thing or not so this um, participants getting that non-alcoholic beer if they don't know if they got non-alcoholic beer but i know they got beer as the researcher that's a blinding but if i don't know whoops if both the subjects the participants and the researcher are blinded that's called double blind if neither the researcher or the participants know that who's getting what triple blind is when the person also analyzing the results doesn't know okay and these are really difficult and are very uncommon there's also quadruple blind but for our purposes really all you need to know is the double blinding and the single blinding and that's when only the participant doesn't know what they're getting. In these next example four, you were asked to determine what was the explanatory, what was the response variable. Um, talk about a actual, a real experiment. Now, I found a COVID-19 study. It's a study to see which dosage of a drug is going to work best. It's called a phase two trial. Okay, so if you want to log into our Canvas page, okay, I want you to go to lesson four, the in-class discussion. I'm going to show you first, since we're talking about trials, uh, I want you to know trials are very regulated in the order things go in. So there are multiple phases of how a medicine or a drug comes into reality to be used on the wider population. It starts out in the lab with somebody having an idea and they're doing some research. If that research goes well, then they study it on animals. And usually these animals start out as either mice, rats, or guinea pigs. And in order to limit the confounding variables in this phase of the study, they stick to one gender on these animals. And that one gender typically is male. My guess is that the doctors doing these studies were typically all male. And, and that's just a tradition that's kind of stayed with that. If things go well, sometimes they go to a larger animal like a beagle the dog and then if all those things go well then we can go to phase zero which is the first study uh, in humans to see how the body metabolizes the drug and this is where we see lots of problems with the gender singularity with the animals and even sometimes those dosage problems happen even when it's in phase three is that the the metabolic dosage is based on the male body the male hormones and the male metabolism. So when we're figuring out that dosage and putting them in women, things kind of go haywire. It is a real uh, actual problem that still is occurring today. Although it's less common, but it does still happen. Why don't they do separate studies like with males and then females? In the mice and the animals? Yeah. I, I, probably because that would, that would increase the timeline is my guess. Yeah, but then they'd have less problems down the line. Um, I yeah. completely agree, but okay. here we, there we have it. I could say more, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, phase zero is looking at how the body metabolizes, and you see the number of people represented is indicative of how big the studies are and how they start out small. Phase zero is very small. Phase one is a little bit bigger, and it evaluates, evaluates the safety and, again, the, and the dosing. And this is, again, where we see the difference in dosing for females and males. Phase two is a study where, again, more patients and affecting the, um, assessing rather, assessing the drug's effectiveness and safetiness, and also looking at side effects on this part too, but mainly focusing on effectiveness and safety. In any of these, especially phase one and phase two, every once in a while, what happens, they find a drug is, is having a very negative effect on people, 
and they'll shut down the study because it's too dangerous. Then the opposite is also true. Every once in a while, there's a study that is so effective. The medicine they're giving people is so effective and they're showing such positive results that they'll actually start giving the drug to both participants, the control group and the people getting the actual drug. Because if it's shown as being so extremely uh, effective and safe, it's actually um, considered unethical to continue to withhold that drug from that other group. So they decide to give it to um, participants. And then we have phase three, which is the largest number of people. And by large, we're talking tens of thousands of people, very large. And again, confirming the drug's effectiveness and safety and assessing the side effects and comparing it to current treatments, if there are any. So that's what drugs go through. What we're gonna look at today is a phase two trial where they're um, looking at the effectiveness of dosage. So you'll see phase one, also it says dosing, but this trial we're looking at is a phase two assessing the effectiveness of dosing, okay? And you may have heard in the news, some people are advocating for COVID to skip phase two and go to phase three, 90% of scientists agree that is extremely dangerous because we don't know enough about these drugs and how they interact with people yet. Here's what we're looking at today. We have a phase two trial for our COVID vaccine. I, ha I actually found the document for the protocol, which is very interesting and written in plain language that I, all of you could um, understand. I will add that link here on this page. Um, so we have 603 people were eligible, some were excluded, and we have exclusion and inclusion criteria. And you may wonder, aren't those the same thing? Okay, so here's the protocol. Here's the inclusion criteria, a whole bunch of things, but then you'll see exclusion criteria. So with that, I'm going to put you back in groups, um, but I would like you to answer those eight questions you see there. As we've done in the past with the my solutions, as I will write up my responses to these questions and I will post those on Canvas as well. Discuss those questions in your groups. So I, I, I forgot to mention this before I put you into groups. That leftmost group in the middle group, that one times 10 to 11 VP and five times 10 to the 10 VP, that's scientific notation, but those are two separate dosages. And then, so really we have three dosages happening here, right? a small, a medium, and none. Because <laughs> the placebo, they're, they think they're getting something, but it's just like saline or something like that. What information do you think that they, they'll obtain from getting those three, from assigning people into those three groups? I think they'll get like different results to see like what would work and what wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes right. like the placebo could have a different effect. Yeah, and it's important to have that placebo because then you know the, if it's the drug that's working or if it's just people mentally thinking, oh my God, I've got free, I'm safe, I've got this vaccine in me, woohoo! And that's why any kind, anytime you see medication, you'll wind up seeing a placebo. Hi folks, welcome back. The sample size, was that 603 or 508? 508. 508, excellent, right. Because even though you had all those volunteers that didn't all qualify for, or, or, or um, some withdrew consent, right? And so um, we don't count that. The volunteers, whoever all volunteers is not the study size. It's the actual people who wound up um, fully participating and that's the 508. Good. All right, and so then um, the, some people were not in, included, and that's important because that controls for um, extra vari variables, like for instance, not including pregnant or breastfeeding women is a really common exclusion criteria for people um, because just with women you know, that your hormones, your body, every, you know, there's so many other things happening to you at that time um, that you can't be sure ever that it's the drug or whatever it is you're trying to study. Um, so that's why we have exclusion criteria. Okay, and was it an experiment or a, um, was it an experiment or a observation? observation? Well, actually, look at, so Look at, remember those special keywords. People were assigned into groups, right? 
And that's a key that what you're looking at is probably an experiment. And this one is indeed an experiment. We have three different groups. Two of them were given uh, dosages of a vaccine, and the third one was given a placebo. So this is indeed an experiment. Knowing now that it was an experiment, we have it to determine which is the treatment group and which is the control group. And remember, the treatment group is the one that's given something or asked to do something. In this example, the one that was given the medication. These folks here, this is the treatment group. The people given the placebo was the control group. What the treatment actually was, was the dosage of the vaccine. Because remember, that's the whole thing we're trying to figure out. The explanatory variable is the vaccine dosage. And the response variable was how the body responded to that dosage. Purpose of assigning the people into three groups. Well, the control group is important because your body reacts to a medication. Some of your body's response might not be the medication. Some of that response might be just you thinking, oh my God, I have a vaccine. I feel relieved. And if you're given a placebo, often you'll see some of those same reactions across all three groups. And so that's why the placebo is very important because it lets the researchers know which of the body reactions are actually because of the medication that they were given and which of those bodily reactions are because of the psyche. But we're going to have a discussion board about the placebo effect and it's just fascinating. We're at the end of time, but it turns out that this higher dosage turned into being more effective. And I'll, I'll post the solutions to these um, on Canvas so you can see my answers, okay? So with that, it was great to see you. All right, stay safe and uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.